to have all of you with us this morning as we gather as God's people this day to celebrate God's gifts of life, to be the people of God gathered together in this place at this time. Good to have all of you here with us this morning. We do have uh, two prayer concerns that we want to lift up before we begin worship. Um, please keep Nora Piper in your prayers. Nora had a procedure this past week. Uh, we're going to continue to keep her in our prayers. We also want to keep uh, Gaylord Bruin in our prayers. Gaylord has been uh, moving from hospital to swing bed, to kind, of, kind of moving around a little bit. Um, we think now he's finally landed for a while out of Moral Home in Sparta for some rehab, and uh, hopefully after several weeks we'll be able to return home. So please keep Gaylord in your prayers as well. Our order of worship begins with confession and forgiveness. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. During the season of Lent, we are called to return to the Lord with all our heart. Let us confess our sin and seek reconciliation with God and neighbor. Most merciful God, you sent Jesus Christ to save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We fail in love, neglect justice, and ignore your truth. Have mercy on us and wash away our sin. Create in us clean hearts for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 326. <laughs> Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, 
and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
I'd like to invite the rest of the children up to join us for a message.
Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Four weeks from yesterday will be March 17th, the day we all wear green, whether you're Irish or not. Corned beef and cabbage will be consumed in mass quantities along with green beer. Even the Chicago River will be dyed green. And those pesky little leprechauns will be bouncing all around, looking for four-leaf clovers and the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. No surprise there, we're all in search of riches. We are all in search of the riches that lie at the end of the rainbow. But what if, uh, that's silly really, or maybe not, what if we think radically for just a minute? What if instead of a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, we find a baptismal font? Crazy? Sure it is, but God specializes in crazy. So hang with me here. It is in that font that we find our treasure. It is in the waters of baptism that God makes promises to deliver us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. That's a pretty good pot at the end of the rainbow. Just as God set the bow in the sky as a sign of the promises he made to Noah and his family, we too are reminded of the promises God makes to each of us in the waters of our baptism. The rainbow is a reminder of God's faithfulness, that no matter how terrible or destructive the storms of life are, we are not alone, and those storms will not overcome us. God's promise brings us comfort. As the water is poured into the font at a baptism, we hear the words, we give you thanks, O God, from the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. In the River Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John, and the heavens were torn apart, and the Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove, and a voice from heaven cried out, You are my Son, my the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. But then, in Mark's Gospel, no sooner had Jesus been baptized than he is whisked off into the wilderness. The spirit that was a part of Jesus' baptism is now driving him out into the darkness and loneliness of the wilderness, where he will be tempted by Satan for 40 days. But the spirit does not leave Jesus unprepared or alone. The spirit waits until Jesus has been baptized and claimed as God's beloved son, with whom he is well pleased, before he is sent out. And Jesus is not abandoned. The angels are there to wait on him during the time of testing and temptation. So what does this have to do with you or me? Jesus isn't the only one who walks in a wilderness. Look around. Tragedy from Florida this week tops the list, but there's a lot more than that. We have all sorts of threats, fears, and brokenness around us. And then despite all that we do have, we feel empty again and again. This past Wednesday, we began our Lenten journey. On the same day that a gunman took lives in Florida, we gathered here in this place, and the sign of the cross was traced on our foreheads with ashes. We were reminded in no uncertain terms that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Our lives are fragile, and we are mortal. But there is hope, hope in that same cross that was traced on our foreheads with water the day we were baptized. This journey of Lent, this journey in the wilderness, reveals the 
the emptiness of our existence. We think we have all that we need to be fulfilled, to be successful. We have a healthy bank balance, lots of things to bring us enjoyment and pleasure, the freedom to do what we want when we want to do it. And yet something nags at us, something gnaws at us, leaving us empty and yearning for more. The wilderness, the hole in our heart left by the loss of a loved one, the diagnosis of a terminal illness, the news of senseless killings of innocent children, epidemics of abuse, hungering for food or adequate shelter, feeling overwhelmed by life, wandering aimlessly, looking for direction. The wilderness is vast and deep. And in the shadow of Florida, the wilderness is foreboding and unyielding. And yet, the wilderness is where we are. It is where our world takes us, and it is where we are called to be. Strange, isn't it, that God would call us to a place that is barren, empty, even dangerous? There in the wilderness, to be challenged and tested, and frequently to find ourselves falling well short. For in the face of evil, in the face of empty pleasures, in the face of a mirror that shows us who and what we really are, we end up feeling drained and overwhelmed. But there is hope, and it's in the pot, the pot at the end of the rainbow, not the pot of gold, but the pot filled with water and word, God's word of promise. As we journey through the wilderness, we set our sights on the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, we journey in the shadow of the cross that looms ahead in the distance. We journey with confidence in the promise that we are not alone. The Jesus who will hang on the cross accompanies us along the way. And when we get to the end of the rainbow, we will discover again the power of the water that splashed us long ago in our baptism. Water that splashes us again, even now, cleansing and renewing us. And we will discover that the baptism that once was continues. Our baptism isn't over. Again and again, the waters of baptism, the water of God's promise, make us new. In those waters, the waters of baptism, waters with God's word of promise, we are again claimed, and we are again embraced by a God who will not let us go alone. The God who created the heavens and the earth, the one who caused light to shine in the darkness, the one who raises the dead to life, joins us in the person of Jesus as we walk the journey in the wilderness. Just as the Spirit did not abandon Jesus in the midst of his journey through the wilderness, Jesus does not abandon us on our journey. We know how our journey will go. We will be called to testing and challenge, to suffering and growth. We will be called to action and commitment, to care for God's world, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. The journey is not easy, and the wilderness is not gentle, but we will not go alone. We labor and struggle and work and hope, confident that because Jesus was raised from the dead, nothing can defeat those who bask in the love and life given to us in the waters of our baptism. And that's the treasure in the pot at the end of the rainbow, life, but not just life, life even in the face of, even in the midst of all those things that pull us down and apart, even in the middle of the wilderness. And that treasure beats a pot of gold any day. It even beats a green river. Amen. <coughs> As you are comfortable, would you please rise and join in the singing of hymn number 613. <laughs>
page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Renewed in the promises of baptism, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Trusting in your covenant of mercy, O God, we lift our prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. may be seated as the offering is received. As 
received the sacrament this morning, please note that we have gluten-free wafers in addition to the bread. The bread was uh, baked by Linda Art, so we thank Linda for that gift. Uh, and we also have uh, grape juice in addition to the wine. So if you have need of those items, please indicate that to us as you come forward. For those of you who are guests and visitors with us, please note the communion invitation printed in the bulletin. We do sincerely invite you to join with us. Return to God with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey, drink for the desert. You may be seated.
and God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. There are a number of announcements that I want to share with you uh, or highlight uh, in the bulletin before I get to that. Please remember that we continue to do the, the survey on same-gender marriages. For those of you who haven't heard this the last couple weeks, um, the, the United States Supreme Court decision a couple years ago struck down the restriction on marriages being between male and female, that, that same-gender marriages are legal. And the ELCA has said that for congregations, that is a congregational decision as to whether that is a part, we understand that, discern that to be a part of our mission and ministry in the world. The Congregation Council would like to um, engage in some respectful and caring conversation about this, and our starting point is to get a pulse of where we're at. And so not a vote, but a pulse. And so out on the table as you go out, out into the gathering area, there's on the table there's a box, and next to the box are some forms, and the forms basically have one question. The question is, on a scale of one to ten, one, I strongly disagree, ten, I strongly agree, should our Saviors and the Church understand same gender marriages to be a part of our mission and our ministry in the world? Um, and so we, we got that out for a couple more weeks. We invite you to take one of the, the forms. Um, there's no place for your name. We're not asking for names. Uh, if you want to put some additional comments, you are certainly welcome to do that. But um, we're hoping that you won't just throw it out and you know, circle a number and put it in the box. But take it home, pray about it, ponder it. Um, what do you believe God is discerning, or what do you discern God is, is doing in our midst, and then bring it back. We'll probably have it out until about the first Sunday of March, so um, please, please, we, we, we got, the, the box has got a lot, of, a lot of response. We've got a lot of good response, we appreciate that for those of you who have already responded. If you haven't, but please, please, please feel free to do so. Now, in terms of announcements, especially things that are in the bulletin, beer and hymns tonight at Westview. Beer and hymns. We did that last year several times. We had a blast. Um, we start at 6 o'clock, uh, grab a, a drink, a beer, a wine, a uh, soda pop, whatever. Uh, some people last year got dinner, some people just got appetizers. You don't have to have anything to eat at all. Just We'll gather probably in the back room at Westview at 6 o'clock. We have little hymn booklets that we made up. We've got sort of a makeshift band prepared. And we're just going to spend an hour singing hymns. No sermon. Spend an hour <laughs> singing hymns. Have a lot of fun. It just, just, you know, we had a great time last year. Last year, we even had people in the dining area who kind of drifted back and, and joined us for a little bit. So um, just come and have fun. It'll last an hour. Um, it, it's really a blast. So uh, join us tonight at 6 o'clock at Westview. Again, probably in the, the back portion of the building. Just follow the, the sound. Um, remember, on Wednesday, we continue with our Lenten worship. We have contemplative worship at 1130. We have worship at 5 and 7. Um, using a drama that I haven't come up with a name for yet, but we have a drama. And um, dinner, let dinner at 5 o'clock, the pro, or 5.45, I'm sorry, between the services. At 5.45 between the services, we have our Lenten soup dinner. The proceeds from the dinner go to World Hunger, to fight World Hunger, so good cause there. Please join us for that as well. And then briefly in the news, or in the bulletin, please note the announcement about Frolic, the Frolic Ministry for zero to three-year-olds. Again, this next Sunday, this week from today, once a month, it'll be a week from today. And Owls meets this Thursday, and I think that covers it all right. As you are comfortable, hymn number 618, please rise.
love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.